that 35th verse, it reads, it says to us, it says, then Jesus said to them, he said, a little while longer, the light is with you. He said, walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He then said, he who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. A little while longer, the light is with who? It is with who? That light is with you. From that verse, I want to talk about and I want to focus on today for a thought, a reason to hope. Again, my thought for this Sunday is a reason to hope. He said a little while longer, Jesus said the light is with you. That is what Jesus said there in my key verse. When we describe hope, we often describe hope as looking on the bright side. You say that hope is looking on the bright side when you are in a precarious situation. When, when things are not looking good, we say that when you have hope, you have the ability to look on the bright side. When you are in a negative situation, uh -huh. when you have hope, you have the ability to look for the positive. Yes, Lord. Yes. We would say that having hope is being able to see the light when you are in the dark. All right. yeah. I don't believe I'm making any of that up. We say that if we were in a dark tunnel, we say that if we have hope, we are able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. In other words, there is a way out of the trouble. When we have hope. At the start of my sermon last week, you'll recall that I said that I love Palm Sunday and that Palm Sunday is my favorite Sunday of the year. But you'll recall that I also said that there was a bit of bitterness, mm -hmm. that there was a bit of sadness that was in my heart on that Palm Sunday. All right. All right. But by the time we got down to the end of my sermon last week, you will also recall that I said, though there was bitterness and though there is sadness in my heart, I still have hope. Yes, yes. And you recall that I said that my hope is not in somebody else. All right. It is not in man. It is not in a woman. Mm -hmm. My hope, I said, is in God. Yes, and I said that because my hope is in God, I believe that we can overcome right. that things can get better. That's right. yes, Lord. I tell you that nothing has changed this Sunday mm -hmm. on this Easter Sunday on this resurrection Sunday. I want you to know that I still have hope yeah. Yeah. and I want you to understand that my reason for hope is in the Lord. My reason for hope is in God. That is what I am celebrating on this Resurrection Sunday. This Easter Sunday, I am celebrating hope. In my call to worship scripture, we saw that Peter said that we have a living hope. And the one thing that we say on Easter Sunday is that he lives. The he being Jesus. What does Easter mean to you? What does Resurrection Sunday mean to you? Well, when I was a little boy, when I was a, when I was a kid, I can tell you exactly what Easter Sunday was for me. All right. I hear some laughs. Yeah, I guess y'all know where I'm about to go with this. 
because it was, I guess, the same thing for, for, for some of y'all as well. Easter Sunday for me was the Easter haircut. Right. You had to have your hair cut. Yeah, yeah. Easter Sunday for me was the Easter suit. All right. I see Court not laughing about this because she she don't she don't she don't get she she don't she missed out on this. Her generation missed out on this. All right. All right. The Zoomers missed this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was it was the 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 haircut, right. the Easter suit. Yeah, yeah. It was the the Easter egg hunt. Now, Court will remember this one. It was the Easter basket that, that that they would give us when we would go up and we would go to church on on that Saturday. We would get the basket and it had all kind of of candy in it, right. it had jelly beans, and it had some of everything in it. Yeah. Yeah. And then the most important thing, mm -hmm. the most important thing, was the Easter speech. It was the most, it was the single most important thing. It, it meant more than the haircut. It meant more than the suit. Standing up in front of the church and being able to say that speech and showing that you actually memorized it. That you, that you didn't need the, the piece of paper. You didn't want to be that one person, that one kid. You know, it's always that one kid that couldn't memorize. All right. And and after after you said your speech, you walked away. And you, you know, you just you stood up there like this. You know, you you yeah, I I, I said it, I did it with that, I memorized it. Mm -hmm. That's what Easter was. That that's what Easter meant to me. And all of y'all are laughing and saying, "Yep." So I assume that's what it all meant for yeah. you as well yeah. but i have grown up mm -hmm. i have gotten a little older now and so my perspective have changed oh, yeah. when i think of resurrection sunday when i think of easter now mm -hmm. i don't care about the haircut i don't care about the easter suit All right. All right. i think of jesus mm -hmm. When I think of Resurrection Sunday today, I think of Jesus and I think of his rising from the grave yeah. with all authority mm -hmm. in his hands, all power in his hands. He came to the disciples after his resurrection. You'll see this in the 28th chapter of Matthew's gospel in the 18th verse. Yeah. He told them, he said, all authority has been given to me after his resurrection. Oh, yeah. I tell you today that Resurrection Sunday is a day of hope for me. It is both a day of hope and a day of faith for me. I use both those words yeah. interchangeably. Yeah. I tell you today that the resurrection of Jesus Christ, All right. the resurrection of my Lord and Savior, I tell you today that it is inspirational All right. to me. Yeah, yeah. No, it doesn't inspire me to go out and try to die and, and rise up from the grave myself. I don't want to do that. <laughs> but I tell you today, it is inspirational to me in that it gives me hope. Yeah, yeah. Somebody will say, well, why does his resurrection give you hope? Well, here's why. First, it, it proved his deity as the only begotten son of God. Yeah. You see, before Jesus, the only way that somebody was risen from the dead was if somebody either called them from the grave. That was Jesus that did that with Lazarus. We saw that in our Sunday school lesson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then Elijah, he was able to raise the widow's son. Yeah. He had to do all kind of things, you know, mm -hmm. he had to lay on them and everything else. But it was the power of God that, that caused that to happen. Yeah. Lazarus was called from the grave through the power of God. Mm -hmm. There was nobody that laid on Jesus. There was, there was nobody that stood outside of the tomb of Jesus to call him from the grave. No, it was Jesus that decided to wake up from the death. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. It was Jesus that decided to walk out of the tomb. All power was given to him. All authority was given to him. He did that through his own might. He did that through his own power. He did that because Jesus is God. So the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it should inspire faith. Because again, he overcame death. All right. He overcame the tomb. He overcame the grave. Mm -hmm. And because he overcame both death and the grave, yeah. I would tell you today that it should inspire you with hope to believe that because your faith is in him, mm -hmm. that you can overcome anything. Yeah. Surely. Jesus being God in the flesh, if he's able to overcome death and if he's able to overcome the grave, mm -hmm. surely he must be able to overcome anything that we can face in the world. Yeah, Lord. And because our faith is in him, it should give you hope. It should inspire you to believe that you can overcome anything because your faith is in him. Yeah, yeah. I tell you today, that he is my reason for hope. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus is my reason for hope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But here's the reality of things in our world today. All right. The reality is there are more people that don't believe mm -hmm. that Jesus was risen from the grave. All right. The reality is there are many people who live among us today who are not filled with such hope. Mm -hmm. The reality is, is that when we look around at the way things are going in our world today, we can see why there are so many people who feel hopeless in our world today. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And I touched on this in, in my sermon last week, and I've been touching on this for quite a while now, actually. There is so much anger in our world today. So much hatred that is in our world today. So much violence. So many people being mistreated in our world today. And it does not inspire much hope in people today. If you're looking around and you're trying to gain hope from what is going on in our world today, the reality is, is that you won't be filled with, you won't be inspired by anything to give you much hope in our world today. And I would say to you today that living without hope is not good. All right. All right. And I'm going to show you that in my message here today. Due to all the anguish and the suffering and the struggle of life, there are many people who are living without hope today. Mm -hmm. And I would say again that living without hope is not good for us. I can't imagine trying to make it in this world. Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine trying to live life mm -hmm. without having hope. I can't imagine doing it. So that's why I want to focus on hope today. All right. I, I, I want to bring hope. I want to encourage hope in those who are hopeless today. Yeah. Those who are in despair today. Mm -hmm. Not hope in man, not hope in me, mm -hmm. but hope in the Lord. Yeah. Hope in his only begotten son, because I know what that hope can do for you. Mm -hmm. Because I know what that hope does for me. I make it day by day living off the hope that I have in my God. All right. All right. I don't hide my disability from anybody. I don't hide what I go through from anybody. I am able to make it yeah. not because of my own will, mm -hmm. but because of my faith and my hope in the Lord today. And if I can make it, I want you, I want you to be able to make it. Yeah, yeah. 
Because I know that what I go through is difficult. I know that what you may be going through is difficult today, but I know somebody that can help you with the difficulties of life. So I want to encourage hope in him today because in him, I tell you, we can make it. I truly do believe that today. I want you to understand that God is our hope. And we'll see here in my key verse today, we'll see that Jesus is actually speaking about hope. We'll see there in the 35th verse, he said again, a little while longer, he said, the light. Again, we, we often liken hope to light looking on the bright side, being able to see the light when you are in darkness said there in the key verse, he said a little while longer. He said the light, the light is with you. And we see him speaking there about walking while having the light. Now we are familiar with Jesus being likened to the light, right? right. That is something that we see in scripture, especially in the new Testament, in the gospels, Mm -hmm. we see it time and time again, where Jesus is referenced as being the light in the first chapter of John's gospel in the ninth verse. If you happen to turn and look at it, Mm -hmm. you'll see that John references Jesus as being the true light. And we had some Sunday school lessons in the last quarter where we saw that as the light, that Jesus was a revealing light to the world. Mm -hmm. And as a revealing light to the world, he revealed the truth. That is what we saw in our recent Sunday school lessons in the last quarter. Mm -hmm. So in the last quarter of those Sunday school lessons, we saw that Jesus, that he himself also proclaimed to be the light of the world. You'll see it said in the eighth chapter of John's gospel and the 12th verse, you'll see that Jesus you see that he spoke to them and it said that he spoke to them again saying, I am the light of the world. And you'll see that Jesus said, he who follows me Mm -hmm. shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Mm -hmm. So again, being the light of the world and we know what light is capable of doing Mm -hmm. it not only reveals the truth but when we think of sunlight sunlight is what helps provide life in our world today if if we did not have light we would not be able to make it there would be no plant life on this rock And without plant life, we would not have oxygen to breathe. Mm -hmm. So we need light to be able to live while we are in this world. But I want you to understand here that when Jesus was proclaiming to be the light of the world, he was not talking about being a physical light in the world. He was not speaking physically. Jesus was speaking spiritually. And as a spiritual light, Jesus was saying that he is the one who is capable of providing spiritual life. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. The life that he was talking about again was not life in this world. Jesus was talking about life spiritually. He was talking about life eternally. We should again understand that the light that he is speaking of is a spiritual light. And I tell you today that I believe that when God gave us his only begotten son, 
that he was given to us a hope, mm -hmm. a hope of living, not necessarily living physically, mm -hmm. but living spiritually, yeah. a greater life. When God gave us his only begotten son, he was giving us a hope to be able to overcome. Yes, Lord. To be able to overcome all of the obstacles of life that we face. Mm -hmm. Not only what we face in the world, but what we face spiritually. Oh. To be able to overcome the darkness. Yeah, yeah. He gave us a hope to be able to overcome the darkness. To be able to overcome the world. Mm -hmm. To be able to overcome sin. To be able to ultimately overcome the devil as well. God gave us his hope. Yeah, yeah. In his only begotten son, I tell you today, to be able to make it. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll see Jesus again proclaim to be the light that we should walk in in the 11th chapter of John's gospel in the ninth verse, mm -hmm. he says in that scripture, he says, if anyone walks in the day, mm -hmm. Jesus says he does not stumble. Right. Say he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. Mm -hmm. But then Jesus, he does a contrast in that scripture. He contrasts someone walking in the day with someone walking in the darkness. He said, but if one walks in the night, mm -hmm. meaning when there's lesser light, yeah. meaning when it is dark, yeah. Yeah. he says of this person, he says he stumbles. The reason why he stumbles is because said the light is not notice says that the light is not in him. Very interesting that he chooses to use the word that the light is not in him. That, not that the light is outside of him, yeah. because that's how we think of light, right? Mm -hmm. Sunlight is outside of us. It's not in us. Right. The lights that's shining on me right now, they're outside of me. Mm -hmm. They're not in me. But Jesus in that verse, he particularly says that the light is not in him. So again, I want you to understand that he's speaking spiritually here today. But what I want you to notice here, I want you to notice that Jesus in this ninth verse, yeah. that Jesus has a desire for someone to take advantage of having the light. Do you yeah. see it there? Yeah. Yeah. Again, he says, if anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble. In other words, Jesus is saying that it is better to walk while you have the light. He said that it is better for you to walk while you have the light in you. It is better to walk with the light than to walk without the light. You see, in that scripture, you see that Jesus was telling his disciples that it is better to move spiritually with the light than to move without the light. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we focus on this spiritually so much is because we are spiritual beings. Right. That is something that I try to make clear to us anytime that I focus on us spiritually. Mm -hmm. We are spiritual beings. We are not this flesh. Yeah. Yeah. We're not this flesh and blood. We are not our bones. Mm -hmm. We are a spiritual being that is trapped inside of this shell. Yeah. And so this is why Jesus was focusing on this spiritually. It's because we are spiritual beings in our spirits and everything it begins there in our spirit. Mm -hmm. When I say that everything begins there in your spirit, I want you to understand that your thoughts begin there in your spirit. Your, your dreams begin there in your spirit. Mm -hmm. If your thoughts and if your dreams begin in your spirit, then the actions that you take, they too begin there in your spirit. 
That is why it is so important for us to understand. That is why it is so important for us to have the light, yes, to have hope in the light. Mm -hmm. Because everything we do begins in our spirit. Every action that we take, every word that we say, it begins in our spirit. If we do not have hope in our heart, if we do not have the light in us, if we are not capable of seeing the light, right. what will we do? This is life force. Life has its ups and it has its downs. We often find ourselves in a good situation but we equally often find ourselves in a terrible situation. If you do not have the light in you, mm -hmm. if you are not capable of seeing the light when you are in that terrible place, what will you do? Yeah. That is the question. Mm -hmm. Now we get back here over to the 12th chapter of John's gospel. We take a look at this passage of scripture that we read for our response of reading today. Mm -hmm. We'll see that Jesus was speaking of a dark time. I don't know if you all see it there. But if you take a look at the 27th verse. All right. You'll see that Jesus says, now my soul is troubled. Mm -hmm. That is Jesus speaking says his soul was troubled. Mm -hmm. Jesus in this passage of scripture was speaking of his looming death. He said that the hour had come yeah. is what he said. It was now his hour. Mm -hmm. And when we take a look at the 32nd verse there, we'll even see that Jesus speaks of how it was that he would be, that, that it would be killed. Mm -hmm. He speaks of how he would die there. He says that he would be lifted up from the earth. Yeah, yeah. Then we get to my key verse for today. Jesus, again, he said there a little while longer, the light is with you. Mm -hmm. He was speaking to the people at that time, saying those words. Yeah, yeah. Said a little while longer, the light is with you. And he said to them, he said, walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. Mm -hmm. Jesus knew what was about to happen to him. Jesus knew that he was about to be taken away from the people. He knew that he was about to be taken away from his disciples. Yeah. And he's telling them right there, he said, a little while longer the light me, I am with you. Yeah. I am physically here with you. He said, walk while you have the light. Yes, Lest darkness overtake you. Mm -hmm. It was about to be taken away. Jesus was about to be arrested. Yes. He was about to be tried. Mm -hmm. and he was about to be crucified. What I want to do here is I want to show you, I want to show you how the disciples, how they reacted. Mm -hmm. I want you to see how the disciples reacted when he was taken away oh, from them. Yeah. When the light was taken away from them, when their hope was taken away from them. Mm -hmm. This is why being hopeless and hopelessness is so dangerous here. The disciples, after Jesus was arrested in the garden, we are told in the 26th chapter of Matthew's gospel and the 56th verse, we're told that all of the disciples, the disciples that they scattered and that they fled. Yeah, yeah. When their light was taken from them, mm -hmm. when their hope was taken from them, yeah. There was no courage. Yeah. Yeah. There was no fight. Mm -hmm. Peter, when, when Jesus was standing with him, he was ready to kill a man. Yeah. He drew his sword. <laughs> All right. But when
when they laid hold on to Jesus, yeah. when they grabbed him, when they took Jesus away, all of a sudden, hope and courage went away from Peter. Yeah. Tell it. Tell it. And the disciples, we are told that they scattered, we are told that they fled. In other words, they ran away. Peter, I hate to bring you up again because I love you, but I got to bring you up again. That's all right. If you look a, a little bit down in that 26th chapter of Matthew's gospel, I did hear some pages turn there. Mm -hmm. So I know some of you are there. But if you look down at that 69th verse, the yeah. 69th through the 75th verse, mm -hmm. You see that Peter had a moment of darkness, if All you right. will, right. where right. there was no hope in him. Mm -hmm. Again, Peter was a very courageous man. Mm -hmm. But when hope was snatched from him, yeah. when hope was taken away from him, mm -hmm. and when he was hopeless, you see that Peter was confronted the woman said, hey, you one of his disciples. Yeah. And I imagine that had Jesus been standing there with Peter, oh, Peter would have been a bold man. Mm -hmm. He would say, yeah, you're right. I am one of his disciples. Yeah. Yeah. But this hopeless Peter denied Jesus. And we know he didn't deny Jesus one time. We know that he denied Jesus three times. That is what scripture said. Hopelessness. At the cross, where were the disciples? The only ones who were there at the cross when Jesus hung on the cross were the women, mm -hmm. and John happened to be there. All right. I guess John found a bit of courage to happen to stand there and to watch Jesus while he hung on the cross, while Jesus became the propitiation of sin for all of us. Mm -hmm. The rest of the disciples yeah. scattered. Hiding. No courage. No hope. The day after his crucifixion, and even the first day of the week, those same disciples, where were they? Did they go to the tomb? Nope, they didn't go to the tomb. We know they didn't go to the tomb because all of the Gospels record that it was the women who went to the tomb. Mm -hmm. And somebody going to say, oh, the women, they had hope. The women had courage. The women, I often joke, and you'll hear it in the Sunday school lesson, the women were going there to prepare Jesus' body. Amen. They didn't have necessarily hope and necessarily courage. Mm -hmm. They were just going to do a job that that I believe Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea, uh, Arimathea rushed through. Mm -hmm. They was going to do a better job than the men, in other words. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe women do have a lot more courage or hope than men. I will say that. I don't doubt that. <laughs> All right. But their hope and their courage was not necessarily about faith in finding a resurrected Savior. Mm -hmm. They was just going to do a job. For, for someone that they love. Yeah. But the disciples, getting back to them again, mm -hmm. his closest followers, by the way, wow. hopelessness kept them away, mm -hmm. kept them from moving. And so I say to you today, yeah. the danger of not having hope, mm -hmm. the danger of hopelessness yeah. is that it can paralyze you. Hopelessness can keep you from moving forward. Mm -hmm. It can keep you from doing what you need to do. Yeah, yeah. It can keep you from doing what you desire, 
what you dream of, what you think of, when you have no hope, All right. uh -huh. you sit back. Uh -huh. yeah. In other words, you become fearful. Mm -hmm. You become afraid. You see how it ties in together? Mm -hmm. And I've said this about fear before. Fear can paralyze you. Hopelessness and fear is one of the most dangerous things that we face in our life. All right. All right. Because it's what holds us back from moving on our journey. Mm -hmm. There is a goal for us to reach in our lives. I don't know what any of your goals are. I don't know what any of your aspirations. I don't know what any of your desires, or any of your dreams are. But if you are fearful, mm -hmm. if you have no hope, how do you expect to accomplish right. what you aspire to? Mm -hmm. How do you expect to accomplish what you desire, what you dream of? Now, my dream is heaven. Yeah. That is actually my dream. Mm -hmm. I want to go to heaven. Yeah. I'm not too much concerned about this world. I, I tell my brother all the time. I tell him after I get a kidney, I guess I can just go and work in a warehouse somewhere. I don't I don't have to have I don't have to be a millionaire. I don't have to be a billionaire. I'm not concerned about those things. Right. I aspire to heaven. Mm -hmm. That is what I aspire to. Mm -hmm. That is my desire. Mm -hmm. I can't let fear hold me back from getting to heaven. Mm -hmm. So I aspire to it. My hope is heaven. So I move towards heaven. Yeah. How do I move towards heaven? I work for the Lord. I minister his word. I have faith in him. Yeah. Regardless of what someone may think, regardless of what someone may say, I move in my faith towards him. So I would say to one who is feeling hopeless today, to one who feel that they are losing courage, that they are losing their hope, all because of what is going on around us in the world today. I would say to you today, do not lose heart. Do not lose heart. Yes, we are living in a world that is constantly moving away from God. Scripture said that would happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Generation after generation after generation has moved further and further away from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And there are some who applied this. Mm -hmm. There are some who are thrilled, mm -hmm. happy, mm -hmm. because they believe religion is going away. All right. All right. But I don't have religion. I have faith. Mm -hmm. This is genuine faith that I have here. Yeah. So it, it always boggles my mind to see people apply the moving away from the Lord that is happening in our world today. Yeah. Because at the same time, the world is moving away from God. More and more people are losing their hope. Yeah. And I began to wonder and even worry about what will happen to the people that are losing their hope. I began to wonder what will become of them if they lose their hope. Because when we lose our hope, we stand still. We don't move. We don't progress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the goal for us as mankind should be to progress, yeah. to move forward. Mm -hmm. We should always seek to get better. Mm -hmm. But what becomes of us if we lose our hope? Mm -hmm. Again, Jesus said here in my key verse today, he said, a little while longer the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. Amen. Now I said that Jesus was saying that because he was going to be physically taken away. I said that earlier, right? Mm -hmm. But this verse is very fitting for today. Somebody's going to say, well, Jesus was physically taken away. That's what you just said. But on this Sunday, guess what we celebrate? Amen. We celebrate that he is risen. Amen. Yes. 
If we could sing today, we would be singing that he lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. That's what we will be singing today. So I say that because I want you to understand that, that when Jesus rose from the grave, I want you to understand that the light was back in the world. Now, God never, God never actually left. God still sat on his throne. But when Jesus rose from the grave, we said that Jesus is the light of the world. The light was back. And because we say that he lives today, I tell you that the light, the light still lives today. If I'm saying that the light still lives today, I want you to understand that hope. Yeah. Hope still lives today. As Peter said, we have a living hope. Yeah. A living hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What's funny is that when, when Jesus was risen from the grave, those hopeless disciples mm -hmm. that, yeah. that I've been going on about today, yeah. Yeah. suddenly their spirits, I want you to know, was restored. They were renewed in their spirits yeah. because Jesus was risen, mm -hmm. because the light was back in the world. They had something to grasp. Mm -hmm. They had something to hold on to. Oh, yeah. They had courage once again. Mm -hmm. They were filled with so much hope. They were filled with so much courage that they began to go out and, mm -hmm. and spread and minister his good news. Mm -hmm. They, they certainly preached the cross, but they preached his resurrection as well mm -hmm. because they wanted to inspire hope. Hope is in the resurrection of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ today. Mm -hmm. Again, I tell you today that we are going to have our ups. Mm -hmm. We are going to have our downs. Oh, yeah. 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 No one should hide that from you. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to hide that from anybody. I'm going to keep it real with anyone. Mm -hmm. But what I would say to you today is right. that Jesus is in the world. He yeah. is living. Yeah. But not only is he in the world, uh -huh. because he ascended, right. we have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. The Holy Spirit resides in all of us. Uh -huh. We are a temple. Yeah. We have the light of God in us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as Jesus, as I referenced that scripture in the life, 11 chapter of John's gospel in the ninth verse, Jesus said that it is better to walk while you have the light mm -hmm. than to walk in darkness. Right. Said that the, the person that walk in darkness, they stumble because the light is not in them. We have the light in us today. So all of you who do not have hope, I would encourage you to step into the light of Christ. Yeah, yeah. Let that light fill you up. And I tell you that it's gonna fill you up with hope. Yeah. And you will begin to move around in this world in light. Everywhere you go, yeah. the light will be inside of you. Whether it is daytime or nighttime, the light will be in you. No matter how dark things get for you, the light will be in you. When you fall in the pit, I tell you that the light will be in you. When you believe that you are in a situation where there is no way out for you, I tell you that the light will be in you. You will always have hope. And I tell you that you will always be able to overcome. You will overcome every obstacle that you face, every obstacle that is on your journey. I tell you that you will be able to overcome it. Every trial, every tribulation that you go through, you will be lifted up over it. You will overcome. Have that hope today. Yeah. Have that hope in Jesus Christ. Through him, we can do and overcome all things, all things. Trust in it, believe in that today. Amen, amen, amen.